So a very warm welcome to another short video presentation from me. Today it's entirely about the DRM function, which stands for Demand Response Mode, and this will just be a brief and concise demonstration. After my last Facebook posts and the posts in my YouTube community, I think I received at least 500, if not a thousand, messages via WhatsApp asking what kind of dangerous half-knowledge is being spread again, mostly from some electrician who can't get it right. I just want to say to all the electricians out there, with my so-called dangerous half-knowledge, which you haven't even seen yet, I've realized a lot already, but that's not the point here. So I'm going to show you now what I've always been told doesn't work, but actually works just fine. What we're looking at here are the performance data from my master inverter. I have a parallel installation. I've deliberately switched off the slave for now, and the reason is that the current firmware doesn't yet support transferring the DRM functions from the master to the slave. I need to discuss this with my colleagues in China. It works. I can do it if I connect all the data cables in parallel and also hook them up to the slave. For the sake of simplicity, I haven't done that now. Instead, we're just running my master unit. We're producing. How much is it now? 12 and a half kW. As you can see, to the right are the inverter settings. This is the Solax cloud. And you can also see that the DRM function is currently disabled, so it's deactivated. We're going to activate it now. I haven't completely finished my data cables yet, the pins are just connected together. That means as soon as I activate the whole function, the inverter will, just like for all of you who say there's no other way, go into shutdown. That's certainly the case for me right now as well. And then I will proceed to show you precisely how, if you meticulously connect the pins correctly, you can effectively wake it up from a complete shutdown state into normal operational mode, all of this with the DRM function still actively engaged. All right, let's get started. Now let's switch on the function. It's currently disabled, as you can see. We're going to activate the function now. Enabled, okay, let's save it. So what happens? I think you already heard it. That relay clicking sound. You can see the output is at zero. Let's take a look at what it says on my inverter display. And just like you all know from this whole ordeal, when DRM is activated, it says waiting again. And now we're in the situation where no one knows how to get it back into normal operation. And everyone claims that I'm talking a lot of nonsense because it's supposedly not even possible. So now I have my data cables set up in the most professional way, as you can see. Now I just have to make sure I get the right pins and I have to steer a bit myself here. I hope you can see this. Let's see. Okay, now you can see it. So this is now prepared just the way I heard it should be. Not everyone needs to see at first glance what I've done here. Watch the display. I'm plugging this in now. We close the whole thing and it's already out of standby mode and now a self-test begins. I've set it to 53 uh, to 60 seconds. Now we simply need to patiently wait for a brief period and then, as anticipated, it will commence its normal startup sequence once more. As you can clearly observe, this process will successfully complete with the digital rights management or DRM function fully enabled and operational. As you can see, I'm now disconnecting it from the mains. Why I need nine kilowatts right now, I don't know either. My buffer probably switched on. So now it will take another 15 seconds and then it should start up normally again in regular operation. Something else I noticed, the startup or in general, the regulation of the MPP trackers, maybe it's just me, but I think it takes longer than usual now. So with the DRM function enabled, the regulation of the MPP trackers at the maximum power point takes a bit longer than when the function is disabled. Don't ask me what the reason for that is, but basically once a maximum power point is reached, that is all MPP trackers have ramped up, the system runs exactly the same as when the function is deactivated. Once everything has started up, which we'll wait for now, I'll also tell you that you can remotely control other operating modes as well. 
In general, it should be said that currently only four operating modes actually work. With the next firmware versions, additional operating modes will be unlocked. Using the Solax Data Hub or even Home Assistant, it's actually quite easy to remotely control everything anyway. The question is, who even wants to do that? For example, I don't allow it. I'll just show the grid operator that I'm one of the few for whom it actually works. If he thinks he can really remotely control my inverter, he's mistaken. I won't allow that, but I will demonstrate to him that, in theory, it would work for me. So it'll take a little while until it boots up, but that's not important right now. So I'll now briefly explain the four possible operating modes. We can also watch down there to see what it's doing. You can see it now, only one of the MPPT trackers has started up. The second one still needs some time. It's waiting now until the first one has stabilized at a maximum power point, then the next MPPT tracker will join in. That's normal. Uh, what was I going to say now? Right, the four operating modes. In general, there's the shutdown mode. That's the one we saw as soon as we activated the function. Then there's um, the normal operation mode. That's the one that's currently active right now. And then, unfortunately, there's not a feed-in limitation to zero mode, but only a mode where no power is produced. That means the device really shuts down completely, similar to shutdown mode, except that it still stays awake. It no longer produces any electricity, neither from the batteries nor from solar power. So, when the inverter activates what's called DRM5, which I'll explain to you in a moment, it reduces both the batteries and the MPPT trackers down to zero. DRM1 is also possible. DRM1 means that it does not allow drawing power from the grid. All right. Now I'll show you that the operating mode DRM5 can also be controlled remotely. For that, we'll switch back to the inverter display. All right. We're now at four kilowatts. That means we're going to control it remotely now. This is what the grid operator actually wants to do because right now we're in normal operation. That's what happens if he doesn't do anything. And now we're going to set a pin. That means the grid operator usually provides us with a potential free contact. He can open or close this potential free contact very simply using a relay. And I connect this potential free contact to the two correct pins on the DRM board. And to show that this works, I'm going to demonstrate it now. That means we're now going to activate DRM1, well actually DRM5, by setting the pin to the correct position. This simulates what happens when you close the relay. And the inverter will then no longer ramp up, like it's doing right now, but instead it will ramp back down to zero. And I'll show you that now. So, this is the primary cable connection here, and this particular one is the second additional connection. And when the grid operator meticulously closes their designated relay or, to be more precise, their potential free contact, the following significant sequence of events precisely happens. So that essential component should now be securely in place and everything should be fully and completely working as intended. Now it takes a little while, the whole thing is generally a bit sluggish, but you can see now that it's no longer ramping up, but instead it's ramping down, and it will keep doing that until it's off, until it shows zero. That's it. So it definitely works. And that's despite my dangerous half-knowledge which I keep spreading in my videos. There you have it. It's now on the changeover switch, only the south string and the harbor string are connected, and the harbor string hasn't even fully ramped up yet. DRM is still switched on. And now, at this moment, it's gradually ramping down, and I have to draw electrical power from the main grid to adequately supply my entire household. Let's switch back to the inverter display. I actually thought the whole thing would regulate faster, but it's going pretty slowly. But overall, it doesn't really matter because I don't use this function anyway. Now I'm just showing that it's possible because you all said it wasn't. And now the grid operator has decided again that we're allowed to produce electricity. That means we're now going to do the opposite and remove the pin again. Just need to make sure it's the right one. Now I have to start over again. I'll say this is the one. So if I put this one back on the outside now, 
The potential free contact is open and it should ramp up again. As you can see, that's what it's doing. It's ramping up faster now than it ramped down before. But that's it. How the whole thing works, as I already mentioned, and that's because all you electricians always tell me I'm spreading too much dangerous half-knowledge. If you want to know how it works, you'll have to pay for it. That's why the next video is the one where I explain the exact pin assignment and how the DRM connection works in detail. The video will only be visible to channel members. You can all certainly give me a thumbs down because of that if you truly want to. That also significantly boosts the YouTube algorithm, and I will definitely see you again in the very next video.